Hello, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person. And I sell yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk, where you can also find links to my online pattern shops and my online courses and where I'm teaching in person. And you can sign up to my newsletter there as well. Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to do a basic brioche tutorial where I show you how to do the basic brioche rib, two color brioche rib. Uh, so how to do brioche knit stitches, brioche pearl stitches, and how to do some basic increases and decreases. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below this video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, as I said, leave a comment below. And let me know if you've tried brioche or if you fancy trying to trying brioche. And if you have tried brioche, what are you struggling with? Or if you want to try brioche but you haven't, tell me what is stopping you from trying brioche. Anyway, I hope this tutorial will help you. Today I'm wearing my um, Delightful Cow, which is a brioche pattern knitted in the round. It's a fairly simple um, brioche cow. Um, all the stitches in this cow I will show you in today's video. So if you fancy downloading this pattern afterwards, I'll put the link below to where you can purchase a pattern from Ravelry and Payhip. When you knit a brioche rib, you are knitting every other stitch and slipping every other stitch and then you go back to the beginning of the row and then you purl every other stitch and slip the stitches you knitted. So on one row you'll be working all the knit stitches, on the next row you'll be working all the purl stitches and the stitches you're not working you're just slipping. And that is what creates this uh, brioche rib. If you do it in two colours then that makes the um, purl columns retreat and the knit columns kind of pop out and um, because you're only knitting the knit stitches so for example in this middle bit I was knitting all the knit stitches in the light grey and the pearl stitches in the dark grey if I flip it over then of course all the knit stitches are in the dark grey and the pearl stitches disappear a bit because they're in the light grey down here is a one by one um, single colour brioche and up here we have a, a two colour brioche and then we have what's called syncopated brioche, which is basically where you change the colours. So these pearl stitches become knit stitches and these knit stitches become pearl stitches and that changes the emphasis. So you can see here we have the um, light grey is the dominant colour and then here I start purling those light grey stitches so they retreat and the dark grey, which I'm now knitting, becomes more prominent. So let's have a look at how to do some basic brioche stitches. So I'm going to show you how to do the basic brioche knit stitches, pearl stitches, and uh, some simple decreases and increases. So my setup row is going to be knit three. Now, it doesn't matter whether you knit continental style or English style, I will show you how to do both. But for this setup row, I'm going to start off by knitting continental. So I've done knit three. And then I'm going to slip on with the yarn in front or slip on with the yarn over. So if you're doing this English style, you need to take the yarn between the needles to the front and then slip the next stitch purlwise. And then you knit one. And because you're knitting it with the yarn in front, it gives you a yarn over the stitch you just slipped. At the moment, those stitches are the same colours. It's not that easy to see. But as we start working with the second colour, you'll see that they'll change. So I'm going to... Take the yarn to the front, slip on stitch purlwise with the yarn over, and then knit the next stitch. Um, in brioche, unless you're doing decreases, you would always slip the stitch purlwise. Yarn to the front, slip the stitch purlwise, knit the next stitch, which gives you that yarn over the needle. So continental style, yarn over, so you just take the right needle and go behind the working yarn, or you lift the yarn over the needle into the stitch purlwise, that gives you the yarn over, knit one. Needle behind the working yarn, into the stitch purlwise to give you the slip stitch with the yarn over, knit one. Slip with the yarn over, knit one. Now the abbreviation can either be YF for yarn forward, SL1YO, slip one with yarn over, or it can just be SL1YO. So whether it says YF in front of the SL1YO or not doesn't make any difference because the abbreviations list will tell you what to do. Um, 
I tend to take the YF out of my patterns just to save space. Um, but I know that that confuses English style knitters. But you just need to read the abbreviations and that will tell you what to do. Whatever the abbreviation actually is. Once you read the abbreviation list, it will make sense. Okay. So I'm just going to finish this row. So slip on with the yarn over. Knit, slip on with the yarn over. And then I have... Um, Three stitches left so I'm going to finish with a knit three so that one's one knit knit two knit three now I'm going to turn and then I'm going to do row one with the main color in brioche knitting you work each row twice except for the set of rows so the set of row we worked once and then we're going to work each row twice from now on so we're going to do row one twice and then we're going to do row two twice now they are numbered row one main color row two comp complementary color or something like that some designers use foreground color and background color some may use color one color two i tend to use mc for main color and cc for complementary color doesn't matter what they're called but you're going to do uh one row row one in one color and then go back and do row the row again in the other color so this is row one so i'm going to start by knitting two and then the next stitch looks like a purl stitch so i'm going to slip that stitch purl wise with the yarn in front so yarn to the front and then slip it purl wise and that will give me the yarn over then the next stitch is a knit stitch so i'm going to go into the next stitch and the yarn over you'll see that that next stitch has a yarn over the needle so hang on that's the stitch and then that's the yarn over so i'm going to go into the stitch and then i knit the stitch and the yarn over together so when i knit the stitch the yarn over kind of comes off with it and then i'm going to take the yarn between the needles to the front to slip the next stitch purlwise then i'm going to knit the next stitch and the yarn over together so that uh the abbreviation for that is brk brioche knit which is shortened bark so if I say bark, I mean a brioche knit. So yarn to the front, slip the stitch purlwise to give me that yarn over, and then knit the next stitch with the yarn over or a brioche knit bark. So let me do it continental style. Yarn over, slip that stitch purlwise, and then bark the next stitch. So you just go into the actual stitch, and that will kind of knock the yarn over off with it. Yarn, um, yarn over slip that stitch purlwise, bark, yarn over and slip the stitch purlwise, bark, yarn over and slip the stitch purlwise, bark, yarn over and slip it purlwise, bark, yarn over and slip the stitch purlwise, bark, yarn over and slip it purlwise, bark, yarn over and slip the stitch purlwise and then I'm going to knit the next two stitches. So that's the first row one. Now I'm going to slide the stitches all the way back to the beginning of the needle. So to do brioche, you need to either use double pointed needles or a circular needle. And for most things, a circular needle is going to be more practical. And we're now going to join in the second color. If you're doing a single color brioche rib, then it's slightly different. Um, but we're focusing on two color brioche now. So because in brioche, even though you're working each row twice, you're actually only working the knit stitches on one row and the purl stitches on one row. So you are only working each row once, even though you're doing two passes across. So for each two rows that we worked, we will only count one row. So when I do row one in the first color and then row one in the second color, I, it will look like I've done one row. So if I count my knit columns, I'll see that I'll, I've done one row. And that means that if I knit the edge stitches now, the garter stitch edge stitches, we're going to have two stitches at beginning and end that are garter stitch. If I knit those in the second color, I'm going to end up with twice as many row, uh, rows at the edges as I have in the middle. So when we're working with a contrast color, we slip the first two stitches pole wise. If you slip a stitch knitwise, you're twisting it. 
Slipping it pearl-wise means you're just moving it across. So we're just moving them out of the way. If you pearl complemental style, just hold the yarn and start purling. I don't tie the yarn to join it in. I just tend to leave a tail hanging down. Um, if you knit English style, then let the tail hang down at the back and then take the yarn between the needles to the front so that it comes through like that. And then you go into the first stitch, which is a brioche pearl. And a brioche pearl is known as a burp. The abbreviation is BRP, burp stitch, brioche pearl. So I've pearled that stitch, so I'll do it English style first because I've started English style. And then because we're going to slip the next stitch with the yarn in front, the yarn's already at the front, so I can just slip that next stitch purlwise. And then because the next stitch is a purl stitch or a brioche purl stitch, I have to take the yarn all the way around the needle back to the front to give me that yarn over the needle for the slip stitch and to get the yarn where it needs to be for me to brioche purl the next stitch. So burp, leave the yarn where it is, slip the next stitch purlwise, and then that's the yarn over. So to give me, put the yarn where it needs to be for the brioche pearl stitch, I go all the way around, back to the front, and brioche pearl. And again, make sure you pull the actual stitch, and then the yarn over will come off with it. If you just pull the yarn over, the stitch will unravel. Okay, so yarns at the front, slip the stitch pearl wise, take the yarn all the way around, and brioche pearl. So let me show you how to do that um, continental style. So if you do Norwegian pearl, you hold the yarn at the back, you take the uh, needle behind the yarn, slip that stitch pearl-wise to give you the yarn over the slip stitch, and then you go behind the working yarn again, like you would do for a pearl stitch, and brioche pearl the next stitch. So yarn behind the needle for a yarn over, slip that stitch pearl-wise, you can see now the color of this uh, yarn over is, is a different color to this stitch we slipped. Then I go behind the working yarn again for the brioche pearl. Yarn over, slip the stitch pearl wise, yarn behind the needle for a brioche pearl. And if you knit uh, or pearl regular continental style, yarn over, slip the stitch pearl wise, and then take the yarn between the needles to the front to pearl if you do a regular brioche pearl. So yarn over into the stitch pearl wise and then yarn between the needles to the front for the pearl stitch. Yarn over, slip the stitch pearl wise, yarn to the front for the pearl stitch. Hang on. That fell off. <laughs> Slipped off my needles. These needles, they're chunky and they're very slippery. Yarn over, slip the stitch pearl wise, yarn to the front and brioche pearl. Now we come to the last two stitches. Whether you do English pearl, Norwegian pearl, continental pearl, whatever pearl you do, leave the yarn at the front because you can see the yarn comes out of the stitch at the front. So just drop the yarn at the front and then slip the last two stitches pearl wise because we're not going, we're only going to work the first two and the last two stitches when we're knitting with the color that those stitches are in. So when we knit with the pale pink yarn. Now, because we've done two rows, we're going to turn. And from now on, if you forget which yarn you worked with last, it will be the yarn that all your um, slip stitches are in. So if you just look at your slip stitches, that, that's the yarn you worked with last. Um, and we are now going to work with the main color again. So you will always work every other color. So it will be color one, color two, color one, color two. Now we're on the wrong side row, so because we're working with the pink yarn that the edge stitches are in, we're going to knit the first two stitches to give us that garter stitch edge. And then, again, this is a purl row, so we can take the yarn to the front, slip that stitch purlwise. If the stitch is a bit loose, just pull the working yarn to tighten it. Um, but it'll be fine once you've done the next row with the uh, purple yarn. Then we're going to purl, so we're going to take the yarn between the needles to the front, to brioche pearl or burp. So now the yarn over is in that pale pink color. And then we're going to slip the stitch pearl wise with the yarn in front, take the yarn all the way around the needle to burp the next stitch. Leave the yarn at the front, slip the stitch pearl wise, yarn all the way around the needle 
to burp the next stitch okay so because we've just done a row of purl stitches I'm going to just do this very quickly um, so I can show you the next row and then on the next row I'm going to show you some increases and decreases so let me just work this row quickly doing my normal uh, Norwegian purl then when we get to the end of the row because we are knitting with this pink yarn we're going to knit the last two stitches okay and then we're going to slide the stitches back to the beginning of the needle because that's where our purple yarn is and when it's waiting for us there so we now have to work that row with the purple yarn and this time we're going to work all the knit stitches the brioche knit stitches so we're not going to knit these first two because we're working with the purple yarn so we're going to slip those two stitches and then the first stitch is a knit stitch so the yarns at the back where it needs to be to knit so we're just going to knit that brush knit that stitch so knit into the stitch and the yarn over kind of comes off with it and then um, slip the next stitch with the yarn over knit brush knit slip the stitch with the yarn over brush knit slip the stitch pull wise with the yarn over brush knit english style um, slip the stitch Take the yarn to the front, slip the stitch with the yarn uh, with slip the stitch pearlwise to give you a yarn over, and then knit the next stitch. Take the yarn to the front, slip the stitch pearlwise, brioche knit the next stitch. Take the yarn between the needles to the front, slip the next stitch pearlwise, oops, and then knit the next stitch. Right. Let me finish this row in continental style because. Um, I want to be able to move on to the increases and decreases on the next row. Okay, so the last two stitches are our garter stitch stitches. And now, because we finished with a brioche knit stitch, the yarn's at the back. Just drop the yarn and leave it at the back. And then slip those last two stitches purlwise. Right, so let's have a look at some increases and decreases. Um, brioche is worked in pairs, so you always have to have a knit and a purl stitch. Um, and therefore your increases and decreases have to be in pairs as well so you'll be increasing and decreases decreasing in groups of two so we're going to do double decreases and double increases so i'm working with the pale pink yarn so i'm going to knit the first two and then i'm going to um, just do a couple of stitches continental style first so i'm going to slip the first stitch pearlwise with the yarn in front to give me the yarn over brioche knit slip the stitch pearlwise with the yarn in front and then I'm going to work a double increase into this stitch so I'm going to go into the next stitch doesn't matter how you uh, knit whether you do continental knit or um, English style knitting or whatever I'm going to knit into that stitch leave it on the left hand needle don't slip it off then I'm going to do a yarn over then I'm going to go back into that stitch not through the back just in through the front and knit it again and this time take it off and that has now become three stitches you can see they're quite close together kind of pushed together so if I do that English style and um, my yarns at the front because I've slipped the previous stitch go into that stitch knit it but leave it on the left hand needle take the yarn over yarn to the front and then knit that stitch again through the front um, and it kind of creates like a little hole when you increase depending on the yarn you're using sometimes that hole kind of closes up a bit sometimes it's more obvious it just depends on the yarn you're using the more increases you work into that stitch the bigger the hole will be so if we're doing a quadruple increase so where we're increasing four stitches we would do we would leave it on the left hand needle we do another yarn over and another knit into that stitch and that would make it um, make that hole a lot bigger so you'd now have five stitches into that stitch we're just going to do three into that stitch so we've now increased two stitches and then we're going to slip on stitch with the yarn in front brioche knit slip brioche knit slip let's do a decrease so we're now going to do a um, the two so different designers favor different um, decreases I started out favoring one called BRSSK2TOG. Um, I've 
mainly been using that one up to now vr ssk2 tog but my current brioche project i'm actually doing vrk3 tog so basically a brioche knit three together so i'll show you the brioche knit three together first because it's probably the easiest one um you go into those next three stitches but the first stitch and the third stitch has a yarn over so you have to make sure you don't miss that yarn over and this is what makes this stitch a little bit difficult especially if you're a tight knitter you need needles with um, sharp points to do this. You go into that stitch. But you have to make sure you go through all the five loops. So all the three stitches plus the two yarn overs. If your um, knitting is a bit tight, if you just put your needle in from the left, sorry, from the right like that, and just pull on it a bit. And sometimes I will just pull down below the stitch as well, just to loosen it a bit. And then I always look tilt it and look and double check that I've actually gone through all three stitches because if I miss one of the yarn overs it's not such a problem but if I miss one of the actual stitches it will unravel so that now those three stitches here knit uh, purl and knit becomes one stitch so let me undo that and let me show you the brssk2 tug so slip on knitwise slip a second one knitwise and then we're going to put our left needle into the front of those two stitches from the left so the right needle is at the back so it's the same as if you're doing ssk so if you're familiar with ssk this should feel familiar you're going to knit those two together put that left that stitch that's left i tend to pull it a bit tight put that back on the left hand needle and then I knit it together with the next stitch and the yarn over. So the next stitch will have a yarn over. So I knit those two together. Um, like that. So let's do that again. By the way, when you undo decreases, especially decreases like these that are done in kind of like two stages, I tend to put my needle into those, that first stitch with the yarn over first. And then I just lift that off that stitch on, that's now on my right needle, which is the stitch that resulted after the first stitch, the first two we knitted together, and then I undo that one. I do it very, 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 very gradually. Hang on. Um, I try not to just like drop it off my needle and let go. There we go. Because it's very, very easy to drop a stitch and for it to unravel, and it's very difficult to fix brioche knitting. So let's try that again. Okay, just checking all my stitches are sitting correctly on the needle. So slip on knitwise, slip a second stitch knitwise, put my left needle into the front of those two stitches from the left. So my needles are crossing over each other and then I knit them together. So it doesn't matter if you do English style or continental style, just knit them together. And then I always tighten it a bit, put it back on my left hand needle. And then I knit it together with the next stitch and the yarn over. So the next stitch will have a yarn over, so I knit those two together. And then to undo it, I put my needle into that first, my third stitch with the yarn over, and I just lift it off that stitch that we ended up with after we knitted the first two together. And then I just look at where that working yarn is going, and I put my needle in there. And then as I pull that off, oops, where is my, oh, there we go. I let that go and then I pick up those resulting stitches. Okay, so that's uh, right leaning decreases. Now for left leaning decreases, I tend to use one called BRSK2P. So we're going to slip on stitch knitwise, slip the stitch and the yarn over knitwise, knit the next two stitches together. So the second of those stitches has a yarn over. So knit the next two stitches and one yarn over together and then we're going to lift that first stitch that we slipped and the yarn over over so that first stitch had a yarn over so you have to remember to lift the stitch and the yarn over together like that so let's undo that one so to undo that one i just put my needle in to catch that slip stitch that we lifted over and then I put my left needle in and catch the other two stitches so it all unravels. There we go. So slip the first stitch and the yarn over together. 
knit the next two stitches and the second one has a yarn over, knit those together. And then lift the first slip stitch with this yarn over, over. And then let's just undo this quickly. Okay, there we go. Be very, very careful when you undo it. And then the second left leaning decrease that's quite popular is BRSSSK. Flip the first brioche stitch, so the stitch and the yarn over knitwise. Then we're going to slip the next stitch knitwise. And then we're going to slip the next brioche knit stitch and the yarn over knitwise. So we've slipped three stitches knitwise. The first and the last one had the yarn over. Then we're going to put all those three stitches back on the left hand needle. When you slip a stitch knitwise, you twist it. So we've twisted all those stitches. Then we're going to put them all back on the left hand needle. This time we're not going to untwist them again. So we're just going to put our left needle in from the left. You can either do it one at a time or do them all at the same time. So I'm going to do them one at a time. So when we put them back, they remain in their twisted position. And then we're going to knit them all together through the back loop. So this would be like doing an SSSK, knit them all together through the back loop, like that. Okay, let me just undo those and we'll do that again. There we go. Okay, so they're back on my left needle sitting correctly. So I'm going to slip the first one knitwise, slip the second one knitwise, slip the third one with the yarn over knitwise. And then you can just put your left needle into the front of all those three stitches and knit them together. That would be the same as putting them all back on your left hand needle and knitting through the back loop. But it might be easier to put them all back on your left needle and knit them through the back loop. There we go. So if you put the needle into all three of them like that, make sure again that you catch the three actual stitches and the two yarn overs and then knit them together. There we go. You can do um, decreases purl wise as well, but it is a lot more difficult because you end up purling several stitches together and that can be difficult. Purling any more than two stitches together can be difficult. Um, if your first stitch of the decrease is a brioche knit stitch, it will be work, the decrease will be worked knit wise. If the first stitch of the decrease is a brioche purl stitch, the decrease will be worked purl wise. Same thing when you're increasing. If you're increasing into a brioche knit stitch, you'll be doing it knitwise. If you're increasing into a brioche purl stitch, you'll be doing it purl wise. There are decreases that decreases four stitches as well, but they're a bit more complicated and I'm not going to show you them in this video. Personally, I tend to try and stick with just double decreases if I can, because it is easier. So here you can see our hand warmers that I designed. And this is a left leaning decrease. So you can see the decrease leans to the left here and there. And then on that side, it is a right leaning decrease. And on that side, I use BRSSK2 TOG. And on that side, I use BRSK2P. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, just ask them below this video. And let me know if you've tried brioche before, if you fancy trying brioche, if you've been put off trying it because it looks too difficult. Just cast on some stitches and practice. So do have a go and practice and let me know if you have any questions. If you are struggling with it, it might be worth trying to find someone somewhere you can go for an actual workshop. So I teach workshops uh, mostly in the southwest of England, but occasionally other places. There may also be a brioche online course in the future. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. And thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And ask any questions you have below this video. You can find links to all my social media pages, my website, where you can sign up to my newsletter and find my online courses and buy my yarns and find links to my pattern shops. All that is below this video. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.